Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage, and this is a piece of cardboard. You may or may not have recently seen a video about this. Austin's Red 71 Hemi Swap Challenger project. About 20,000 people have so far, which is cool. It's gotten a little more complete since then. Wow. All the comments on that video with like one or two exceptions have been largely positive. So thank you very much for that. A lot of the comments praise the build quality, something I'm very proud of. So today I thought I'd take a minute to show kind of how I did that. Okay. The way I built this car was by like thinking a lot, so much, and then sometimes redoing things, trying to figure out the right location for every component and then making it live there happily. But here's one of the techniques I used to accomplish that. Bad Obsession Motorsports. With their Project Binky build, they showed me everything I know about putting things together in this way. So if you want more information, go watch like any of their videos. If you happen to be a master fabricator, nothing I have to say is gonna help you in any way, so you can go ahead and sit this one out. The basics are simple. You've got a part that wasn't originally in your car and you need to attach it somehow. You need it to live in a given amount of space and stay put there. Sure, you could use 29 zip ties or maybe super glue. But wouldn't it be so much nicer if you could mount your new part to like a bracket? You know you're doing well when your bracket has got a bracket on it. Hashtag life goals. You can. And all you have to do is flex your CAD abilities. And if you haven't guessed already, I'm not talking about the fancy computer program. I'm talking about cardboard aided design. It's a pretty simple process if you've got a little part you need to mount. Basically, you figure out the bolt holes on said part, what you need there to hold it to the bracket. You figure out where in the car the part needs to live. And then you can start drilling a bunch of random holes in the car, but personally, I like to look for different holes that are already available to use as pickup points for mounting. You use a piece of cardboard and start charting these different locations. You draw a little map, figure out the best shape for it, trim it up, and then you transfer it to metal. For the most basic possible version of this, let's take a random component, an orange box in this case, and figure out how to attach it to this inner fender. Now the cardboard you want to use is very specific. It's cardstock, thick enough to hold its shape, but thin enough to work with easily. You don't really want to use that type of cardboard because it sucks. Here's a random offcut of cardstock that looks to be about the right size. Conveniently, the module fits on it and it looks like it would be the perfect size to reach those two screws. So let's draw that up. Now, obviously there are a zillion different ways you could accomplish this. There are many different shapes you could make. There's a certain aesthetic aspect to this. On this random piece of cardstock that just randomly has an angle that matches there, this looks pretty nice. So I mark the bolt hole locations and the outside of the module on that side. I mark pieces of the template that I'm gonna cut off with an X. Now there are even more things to think about here. How do you want the part to sit in the car? Personally, I want the bolt holes to be parallel with those screw holes. And pretty obviously, the bolts that hold the module on need to not be over sheet metal like this. So let's go here. Of course, you can't just magically see those screw holes behind the piece. You could start tapping on it and make little impressions of the bolt holes. But another technique is to just make little dots that line up with them. Now you have the bolt center width. And then you can use a measuring device to transfer those marks inward. I went for about half an inch. Let's cut our template to shape and see what that looks like. A straight corner like this on a piece of sheet metal, really good for stabbing people. And it doesn't look very nice. So I like to round corners like that. Ignoring the fact that those two screws, which would secure this to the body, are way too small. And depending on the thickness of this material, it may be way too flimsy to mount in sheer like this. It's beautiful and perfect in every way. Oh yeah, fantastic. Now, obviously these screw and bolt locations need to become holes. So we'll use some kind of implement of stabbing to accomplish that. Nice. Now, obviously that was like completely freehand. You could get scientific, measure across this, make sure it's square, you know, parallel or whatever. Also, how did I goof up that screw measurement that bad? Eh. Here's the great thing about this though. The utmost of precision, not required. Just oversize all those screw holes and 
it's probably going to work out just fine. You'll have some adjustment, and since the head of the screws that'll be holding it down are much larger than the holes, it won't be a problem. Now you take your template over to a piece of steel, or aluminum, you know, if you prefer. It can be helpful to line it up with a straight edge to keep things square, if you have a straight edge. And you use a Sharpie or similar to transfer your template onto metal. Now you just need to cut it out. It may be helpful to drill the holes first while this is still attached to a larger piece and it's easier to clamp. After that, you know, cut off wheel or tin snips or similar. I'm not actually gonna cut that out because, well, we're running a little low on raw materials right now, but that's the basic gist. That process is exactly how I ended up with this nifty bracket. It does have a bend in it here in the middle, but the rest of the procedure is exactly the same. Now that we've seen the basics, let's look at a slightly more extreme example of the CAD. This modern hemi-swapped classic Challenger is equipped with a cone-type filter and an intake pipe. This kind of setup is often referred to as a cold air intake. But it's not a cold air intake, at least not without one additional component, a heat shield to direct the air intake. In this car, the filter lives right next to the radiator. It's a very, very tight fit. Conveniently right next to the radiator, there is a hole that comes from behind the grill. So that's a great spot to pull our air from. Now, of course, we moved the battery to the trunk. We did that because with this configuration intake, there's really nowhere else for that to live. So this space where the battery used to live is what we have to work with. Now I've already used the section below it to mount the main fuses and the relays for the cooling fans. And as you can see, there's a convenient shelf right here. There's another unused bolt hole in that location, so that seemed like the perfect place to start. This isn't a very heavy part, but it is going to need two or three different pickup points to hold it still. I went for this upper radiator mounting bolt. So I started building my box with this random chunk of cardboard that was laying on the floor. It just happened to be the perfect length for what I needed, so I went with it even though it's really the wrong material. The bottom of the box, easy. It's just in one flat location but the top of the box has to meet the contours of the hood to seal efficiently. To figure this out, I had to map out the pertinent locations on the hood with some masking tape, and then I came out with a cutout that matched the basic shape of the box. I aligned it on the hood with my marks, and I figured out roughly where the top was gonna be. Then I took a second piece of cardboard and started cutting it to match those contours. We really wanna keep hot air from the radiator, which lives right here, from getting over to our air intake. So it's pretty important to get at least close to the hood to block all that airflow off. To that end, I have a raised section here, then an inch drop to here, and then almost another full inch drop to here that I had to build into my template. That gave me a shape that kind of looked like this, although it didn't have a hole in it yet. Obviously, I rounded every corner because that's just how I roll. So then I had a bottom template and a top template. I just had to figure out how to join them together. That was fun. I basically just sort of eyeballed it wedge this in here and close the hood on it. Then I reached all the way up from the ground to feel what the gap was like. Eventually, I ended up with this after some trial and error. That's all well and good, but I still have to get the pipe into the box. So I took this random off cut of air intake pipe, which is the perfect length, and lined it up roughly with the final positioning. I templated that circle. Then I used a slightly larger circle to give some extra space around it. More on that in a minute. I'm not as worried about the bottom of the box, I am going to cut and fold over an area here to enclose it and add rigidity, but I had to template the shape of the box anyway to match the hood, and I decided this would be a perfect piece to cover the floor, albeit with some more trimming here. Aftermarket cold air boxes like this that are designed to meet the hood are generally gasketed to the hood with some weather stripping, so I'm going to do that. I am going to try and keep it from touching the hood, but if it ever does, It'll be protected at least. I considered making a little piece to enclose the pipe fully, but I think by the time this is covered in rubber, we're gonna be just fine. The other issue is movement. This engine makes a ridiculous amount of horsepower and it does twist quite a bit when you get into it. So I want the pipe to have the ability to move in here and closing it just kind of seems like a mistake and extra work when it comes to service. I'm still tweaking the final design and I'd like to copy the whole thing over to a new larger piece of cardstock so I can confirm the shape. I may actually move this corner outward just a little bit, but there's not a whole lot of room there. You see, someone put a cooling fan right in the way, so yeah, lots of stuff to consider. Like the rest of this project, to be truly successful in this, I just kind of have to sit back and stare at it. Take in every aspect, 
everything that surrounds this piece, every movement that could happen going down the road. It's all important. Now that I've got my rough airbox templated, I'm working on the radiator cover. The vintage Mopar gasket box seemed like an excellent choice for this. It's pretty simple, really. It has two tabs that mount into the radiator support. It's gonna come down off of the radiator support and form a Z. It's gonna cover this gap to help air move more efficiently over the radiator instead of around it, and it's gonna look better. Most importantly, it's gonna hide the radiator mounting. I'm really not super happy with that, but I didn't have many other choices. Carefuling. All right. Notice the dashed and dotted lines I used to mark all the bends. Let's make the bends. We'll do that over, well, something straighter and better than that. Like the vise, maybe. Mr. Yardstick works pretty well for these longer bends. Nice. Sure, little flat pieces are one thing, but working in three dimensions like this is where this technique really shines. You're able to visualize the part you're gonna make, get it situated in its space, and figure out the little goofy things. I'm gonna leave a gap here, which I may well also fill with thin rubber weather stripping. This radiator cover mounts here to factory holes, and it's gonna mount here to the screws that mount this aluminum shroud. So we need to get those positions figured out as well. I needed to get the air box situated first so I knew exactly where the radiator cover needed to be. The two parts will be very close here, but they shouldn't touch. I do need to add a little wing to go back here and cover the rest of the radiator mounting. Because again, it's just kind of ugly. Unlike working with metal, it's really easy to extend a piece of cardboard. Of course, it's easier when the cardboard's not covered in oil. I've got to work the shape down at that end around the radiator cap a little bit more. I think I might end up cutting it there and folding it inward. I don't know, we'll see. It's not gonna end up perfectly symmetrical, but it should look pretty good. The template is great for getting the basic measurements down. You can vary the final design quite a bit as you're transferring it to metal. There are all kinds of little changes you can make without major issue. The important thing is to make sure you leave yourself extra space, room for things to move around, so it doesn't have to be clinically precise. Because let's face it, it's not going to be. This is basically what these pieces are gonna look like. Except they'll be black, made out of metal, instead of greasy cardboard. As a general rule of thumb, if you're doing this on a Mopar, make sure you hit your head on this like seven times over the course of the process. Obviously there are more little details to finalize, but this is pretty good. It's close to what I had in mind. Now with that process done, you take your template, flatten it out, and set it on your material. You're going to want to transfer all the locations of your folds, cuts, holes that you have to drill, just like the smaller piece. Wow, I just happen to have exactly enough material for this with a little bit left over. Unfortunately, I will be distinctly lacking any factory straight edges. If you happen to be in a situation like this where your straight edge on your template sucks, just mark the corners and use a yardstick or similar to get straight lines. Now you do have to pay attention to how you're transferring these lines and how you cut them. I've marked the outside of my template, which means I'm gonna cut the inside of that line to make the marker disappear with my cutting tool right on the marker. That way it ends up the same size as the template. If you were to cut outside of that marker line, because it's like an eighth inch wide, your part would be a quarter inch wider than it's supposed to be. And that probably won't be ideal. Nice. Now it's time to get destructive and let out some smells. Party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm helping. Note to self, buy a plasma cutter. Mike did me a big old favor, cut these things out with the plasma torch and while I wasn't looking, he even sanded them. Of course I was gonna blast these things later, but no oh well, they're nice now. Now I'm going around with a file, flapper disc, and a cutoff wheel and just making all the little details nice before we bend this thing to its final shape. Bending the thing. Oh, uh, not quite, but close. Well, that's a cold air intake box if I've ever seen one. Uh, all you need is some choice fabrication tools and like 29% of a clue and you too can make funky little pieces for your Hemi Swap Challenger. Many days and a whole lot of grinding and sanding and welding and snipping and we've got these. Oh, I still have to do the floor for the box. Oh yeah. 
It's all coming together. Look at that. It's magnificent, kind of. Next, and there you go. Finished product. Installed, painted, beautified, covered with some uh, hose, vacuum hose that I split open. I did have to turn the filter this way so it didn't hit anything. And that includes the hood. A standard cone would have fit a little bit better, but this is what we've got. Oh, I also installed Borgeson's U-joint kit on the column, but that's another story. I almost can't believe I'm saying this, but this car is like done almost. <clears throat> almost, I said. Hope you enjoyed this little look at the design and building process. It takes some work, a lot of thought. And as you can probably tell, I'm no professional fabricator, but the results speak for themselves. Anyway, thanks for watching. And remember, I ain't here to break it. Just see how far it'll bend.